and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some artifact aggro to kick off the day today. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. As you can see, these four decks listed over on the left hand side. We have four decks that were from 5 0 lists from Magic Online and taking all decks that have no green and no black because. As you all know, I play a whole lot of both green and black decks here on the stream. Those are uh, what I think are probably the two best colors in standard, but they're also, you know, like they're just very good support colors, and there's a lot of different ways to go with them. And so most all the decks that we play here are green and, and or black. And so for those of you that um, aren't uh, really fans of those colors, want to see some different kind of decks, that's what we got going on here. So let's, let's uh, check out this deck here. So this is... I'm calling this Artifact Aggro um, because we are an artifact-based deck that's being aggressive. Uh, you know, we have we have some one drops, which are all pretty mediocre. But you can't you can't expect uh, too much really good things with um, colorless one drops. You know, like maybe they're just going to be an O3 <laughs> that have uh, an ability and so on. Uh, but to help out the colorless one drops, of course, we have Steel Overseer, so we can start pumping them up. And we can make some some good attacking creatures. And our other uh, card that our deck is kind of built around is All That Glitters. One in a white enchantment. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and enchantment you control. Um, so, you know, you, basically we could, we're playing, we're kind of like playing Boggles here. Where we're, we're trying to put this All That, that Glitters on one of our creatures. Uh, Ginger Brute is kind of the best one to put it on because... Uh, it can it can give itself unblockability basically, unblock yeah it you know it can be unblockable, um, and uh, and yeah try to kill our opponent very quickly with that. We have we then have God's willing to help protect the creature that is glittering uh, to be able to make sure it stays out there. We also have Stone Stone Coral Serpent, which is just another really good artifact creature, which we could put it the all that glitters on that has trample. Also, and then it can't be blocked by multicolor creatures either. So that's kind of what our deck's about. Just like so, we got some really cheap stuff. So then in the top end, of course, we have some Gideons. We can give that creature that has all that glitters. You can give the creature indestructible. Also, so you can just freely swing in with an indestructible permanent as well. And of course, Gideon's just a, a good aggressive threat. Uh, you know, giving our deck another angle of attack with a Planeswalker. Three Mystic Forge to be able to play artifacts off the top of our library, so we can. It's, this is kind of like our experimental frenzy, so we don't run out of gas. And kind of the same thing with Arcanist Owl gets us a little bit of card advantage. You can search for an art, you know, you get a look at the top four and reveal an artifact or enchantment card. So we can find that all the glitters that we need or find like that glass casket if we need a removal spell. Or, you know, look for Mystic Forge also if we're kind of flooding out. So that that's what our deck's kind of about. Um, our sideboard has a whole lot of different interactive elements in here um, including uh, an extra land for if we're going bigger with cards like Cavalier of Dawn and Ugin the ineffable uh, the Demir artifact deck that we played yesterday that was that was just so much fun of course we saw the power of Ugin and Mystic Forge um, together in that one um, but yeah so let's give this a try so these decks today these are four decks that I'm trying out for the first time I'm going to play a league with each one. So that's, we're just going to be playing some leagues today. Let's see if we can get the five win league here. We'll see how Artifact Aggro treats us. Aw, thanks, Icarus. Icarus? We'll go with Icarus. Thank you so much. Thanks for a structured stream, great entertainment, and a learning experience. Well, you're, you're very welcome. And I really appreciate that as well. Thank you. Hey, what's up, Uday? Now, some of y'all were saying that there's too many islands in the deck, and this hand certainly makes it seem like too many islands. <laughs> I don't... I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Like, is my opponent going to die to some 2-2s? Two like, probably not. So I guess I mulligan.
but I kind of imagine like my hands looking pretty bad with this with this deck just in general. There's only 21 lands in the deck. Hmm. I guess we mulligan. Okay. Well, we'll keep this. And we'll ditch a basic planes. Try to have one drop into Overseer, into Overseer plus one drop if we draw another land by then. <laughs> Did you wait, Dead Alarm, how'd it go? Hopefully it went pretty good. Hey, what's up, Radical Guru? Yeah, that's that's my plan is to have uh, Nif Mizzet reborn tomorrow. That's the plan. That's the plan. Um, make some one ones. I had some other business I had to do today, and so I didn't have a chance to take a look at it today. I mean, I'd like a Mystic Forge, but I kind of need lands to, to play that. Steel Overseer can make some big creatures pretty fast. Yeah, we are. Yeah, this is this is kind of close to a modern deck. That is true. Ginger Brutes seeing play in modern affinity these days. Okay, nice. Yeah, I could I could definitely see that. All right, so they're playing. They may be playing the Is It Alliance deck that are playing up next. Maybe. Stream Decker doesn't have the deck for you. Are you sure? It should. Everything everything over on my side shows that it has the deck. And that should be the deckless link. So is all that glitters? This is in Modern Affinity now, too? All right, anyway, I don't know if I actually really want to change anything. And we saw one card from our opponent. It was an enchantment. I could have disenchant for it. I'm going to keep this. Let's do it. Yeah, Steel Overseer has been a, a long time modern card. Cool. Stream Decker working. Good, good. Wish we had a second land. This hand's kind of really good, though. We'll get that second land. We're just doing something different today. I play so many different green and black decks. Just doing something different today. We're playing 
the other three colors. I would like to draw, like, my best draw step. Our bond was forged in battle. <laughs> and many training sessions. My, my best draw step would be a God's Willing. Hey, right. how about that? All right, now I need Stone Coral Serpent to not get killed this turn. My plan is crystallizing. All right, this looks pretty good for us. Am I supposed to attack... Nine nine. Yeah, I think we attack Royal Scions. White red version with Nahiri. Nahiri just all Nahiri does is like make equip cost less, right? But yeah, I know red would give you frenzy, experimental frenzy, which could be really powerful. Save Glass Casket in, in case they have another one of the O4s, another Pyromancer here. How does this deck compare to the Demir Affinity yesterday? They, yeah, they're they're very different. Like that De Demir Affinity is. Um, kind of a control deck, or, you know, like, it's playing to, like, a late game, trying to play tons and tons of spells, like, in a late game. This is just a very aggressive all-in deck, you know, trying to just suit up something with this all that glitters and, and race like that. So they're, they're drastically different decks. Um, so, you know, they're, it's really difficult to compare them, basically. It's like comparing... You know, Selesnya Adventures to Golos Field of the Dead. Like, they just do completely different things. It's 
So I don't know. The the Demir the Demir deck is a lot more my speed. I I I really liked the Demir deck. All right, want to know how was your match? What? What is this? What is this? Which will do better in the current metagame? Um, I mean, I think I think probably like the the Demir deck, like. The, I think mean, th this deck is a lot less. Uh, this deck is less consistent. Um, because you know, like you can ginger brute, then all that glitter. Like if you know, if they have like the removal spell. Yeah, basically, this deck is just less consistent with playing twenty one lands and all that kind of stuff. But it's also more explosive. Like the best hands with this deck are probably going to be beating like whatever your opponent's doing. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. It's just, you know, it's a, this is kind of an all-in deck. Yeah, the, the second one, Sebit. Yeah, explosive but unreliable doesn't always mean janky. Like I said, depends on the consistency, I suppose, for that. But it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's janky because of those two aspects. I feel like they're not doing anything else. I feel like they probably have Murderous Rider. If I try the, all that glitters, they have Murderous Rider. Hey, right teach play with the Twitch Prime sub. Definitely getting the hype votes there. Thank you so much, right teach play. Blue mana is for sideboard cards. There's, there's not anything in the main deck that costs blue mana. Okay, so this is an Abzan deck. We'll say the Stone Coral Serpent has has definitely been um, impressive. Oh, you're welcome, right, Teach Play? You're welcome. There it goes. Questing beast. Is Ginger Brute a machine or a steel overseer is just really good at baking? Probably Steel Overseers are really good at baking. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't, I'm not exactly sure why Ginger Brute's an artifact. That's that's a good question. You're like, what's like metal about this thing, or you know, like it's, it is. You know how how is, 
like is food so food is an art i mean i guess all the other foods are artifacts right like the food tokens like food tokens are artifacts like how is food an artifact so i guess that just kind of goes along with it gonna try to just bring this back with questing like they just want just want to bring that back so an art okay so an artifact is just an item or an object what a mess I've made I want to play this all that glitters. Oh, wait. Their thing has haste. Huh. I guess that's not going to work very well. Questing Beast has haste. Huh. All right, so that that worked out pretty well for me. Soren can't bring back questing beasts. So that worked out. Obviously, they could just have another. <clears throat> Beast. Right at the bottom. Good scry. Yeah, I was I was happy my opponent traded. I, I kind of figured that they would have another questing beast since they traded. That was my guess. So two white. They shocked in for, could be like Garrick, uh, could be I don't, I think Tulsimer is double green, single white. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Tulsimer is double green. I don't know if they have like. I guess I guess it could be Casualties of War. I don't think they'd have Kaya's Wrath. <laughs> All I'm saying is that if Sahili can make artifact creatures of any creature, there should be at least one cookie dinosaur on Kaladesh. <laughs> okay. So an artifact... Essentially something like with skill and made put together, like kind of historically speaking. So by essence, not naturally occurring. So food fits that category very well. I'm hoping a lot of their cards are multicolored. Sure seems like it. If they're trying a multicolor theme. So I'm hoping that their removal is multicolor as well. That's my hope. 
We could obviously just have like a murderous rider that blows this up. That's a good sign for me. Still a good sign. And that's even a better sign. They just kind of put themselves dead. They gotta target the gargoyle. Or me. Darn. I was hoping they would target the puppet and we'd be able to exile the puppet. So yeah, I can make this a 1-1, one, one, so I have a 1-1 one, one to attack also, but then the 1-1's one, not an artifact, so it also just removes one. Power and toughness from that thing as well. Protection from multicolor is pretty nice. We just saw, like, that game, they didn't get to use their casualties of war on it. They are a removal heavy deck, so all that glitters is going to be a, a little rough. I could definitely see Pro Black being nice. Cavalier of Dawn can like kill a Planeswalker or something. Disdainful Stroke has tons and tons of applications. Let's definitely play Disdainful Stroke over Glass Casket. But we are a 21 land deck. Wait, why do I have 61 in here now? Does my deck originally just have 61 cards? No, it has 60. Didn't I just take out 4 for 4? Why does it say 61? Oh, this other owl came in. That's why. Um... Possibly I need to do more sideboarding here. I need to just go big and kind of take out a lot of the crappy one drops and put the extra land in and go a little bigger. Um, I honestly don't know what, let's see, corridor monitor, one blue, ETB, just untap, tap an artifact. It's not a very impactful card still, Corridor Monitor. Um, these lists today's were 5-0 lists. I didn't build the list that we're playing today. These these lists here. <laughs> Disenchant in this deck is cannibalism. Well, I wish this was Glass Casket. Would rather take Hero. We'll see how impactful the Disdainful Stroke is. But that already hurts. How's our 21 land deck drawing 6 lands?
a reason to not attack with the ginger brute last turn. I guess just I was trying to scare my opponent. Try to scare them into not attacking me. It didn't really work. I want to play Gideon real bad, but just really shouldn't. What's up, Brad? Thanks for that resub. So right now I'm keeping the four mana available to activate the Lock Twain Gargoyle. And we need four mana for that. So that's why my opponent didn't attack previously. I did not stop this fight. This is kind of the problem with, with this type of deck, is if you you know you we have a, a limited number of very powerful cards. We have a lot of very weak cards. Like Ginger Brood and Gargoyle. Time for a drink. We draw the wrong cards. Our deck doesn't do very much at all. Which means that I need to mulligan more aggressively. Hmm. I don't think we're supposed to draw a third of our lands, though. Right away. I'll go to the next game. Maybe I take out the Gideons, get this other owl in here. I'm worried about actually casting five mana cards. <clears throat> Alright, let's see how this goes. I'm kind of assuming my opponent drew all those Hero of Precinct ones that game. I'm kind of assuming that they're not going to draw all the Hero of Precinct ones again. <laughs> this is the problem with putting expensive cards back in the deck, but we have a couple of important ones. We've seen how good Serpent is and all that glitters. Like, Serpent and all that glitters are, like, that's a good combo. Like, unfortunately, we, we really just have a five-card hand here. These Owls 
are just, you know, like kind of unplayable. So we have like a five card hand. Well, it's a pretty good five card hand. I think we need to do better. Hey, WQ. Going real good. And Kilo, that resub. Thanks, Kilo. Yeah, a new set came out about two weeks ago. So, fairly recently. I could have shocked in. Good. And protected from Legion's end. unlikely they're going to have, you know, having Plains Forest. It's pretty unlikely they're going to have removal for Ginger Brute here. Huh. Never mind. Not unlikely at all. I thought I could sneak that in and, and be able to have God's Willing the next turn. Obviously I was wrong. Thanks for continuing to make great content and giving me fun deck lists to shamelessly steal. You are welcome, Nate. That is what I'm here for. Thank you so much for keeping your Twitch Prime sub going. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing about our deck. We're pretty all in deck. And so them them having the removal for that all that glitters. This is a loss. Oh, I like a good fight. Notice I didn't say fair. It's not exactly fair. I'll do that. Just you. We ran into an opponent that's playing Knight of Autumn and Kaya and Vraska. All this stuff. Your life's about to end. But like even, even if we draw another all that glitters, they'd be able to destroy it pretty easily. This is just a, a really great hand for my opponent. Its loss will also. Yeah, that, that's a pretty awesome turn five. Casting seven mana worth of planeswalkers. All right. All right, they slowed our deck down. We're one and one. It's easier when my opponent's not killing all my creatures. I think this deck could support Archon? Archon? With 21 lands? Harmonious Archon? There's no way. I shouldn't even had I shouldn't have had that five drop in there. Like that, that I brought the five drop in because we'd flooded out. I was thinking maybe we could use it, but I mean we really shouldn't have a five drop with 21 lands.
I think my opponent meant Harmonious Archon. Or sorry, not my opponent, sorry. Uh, the person in chat meant Harmonious Archon. Do you think green could work for Rose Thorn Halbred? Halberd. I like that card. I don't know like what else like if green gives you a lot more besides that, but that is a good card for this kind of deck for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the gargoyle is very weak. Yeah, it's it's a very bad individual card. But we saw it, um, you know, one of the other games. Like, you know, you just pair it with Steel Overseer. You know, it's it's a support card that makes some of your other cards better. Basically. Let me lead the charge into darkness. I believe in you. Questing Beast is unfortunate. I can't even target my opponent. It's creatures with God's willing. Can't even just cycle God's willing here. Or by cycle, I mean like just try to scry. It's unfortunate. I guess I could have grabbed the, put the enchantment on this thing. I'm thinking place serpent to be able to block beast. This is going to hurt. That was not a great time for a shock land. And all these basics earlier. because combat damage can't be prevented. I forgot about that clause. The combat damage can't be prevented clause. It's not the death touch doesn't matter. It's that that clause that's in there also. Ugh, I forgot about that thing. Yeah. There's too much text there. Uh Yeah, that's not great. Kind of playing this in case of another questing beast. I 
but we're like pretty dead with another questing beast anyway though. Yeah, so the protection usually prevents the damage, and the card says the damage can't be prevented. So it does not work. Alright, so we've gone through eight lands. There's only 13 left. So maybe we can have a really sweet Mystic Forge turn here. We're gonna need it. All right, good start. Nope. Pay one life. Land number nine. So our deck seems to really struggle with Questing Beast. Alright, I'm going to just try taking out these gargoyles and put in the extra land and trying to play these expensive spells. We'll see if we actually get to cast them or not. Yeah, indestructible is different. So yeah, indestructible does not prevent the damage. So, so no, questing beast does not kill an indestructible creature. The indestructible creature takes the damage and it doesn't die. So I don't I don't know if their deck plays a whole lot more to disdainful stroke besides questing beast. So it's hard to have that line up. Um you know, if they if they get a questing beast through disdainful stroke, it doesn't answer the one on the battlefield. So I brought in some conclave tribunals to answer it. I think that's a better, a, a more reliable, at least option. Okay, two Rakdos decks back to back, playing Active Treason now, huh? That that, that is true. That playing Witch's Oven makes Active Treason better. There are a lot of large creatures that are difficult to kill in red. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Why does Arena do this to me? We did the exact same thing yesterday with Steel Overseer. I'm just trying to play my card. Uh. Well, this Ginger Brute should have a counter on it also.
Should be attacking for six here. I have a feeling that that extra point may come into effect. Hey, Hatred. Yeah, we'll, we'll play that deck again soon. Probably Friday. Um, but, yeah, don't have it on the schedule again for today. I don't, I don't usually play decks back-to-back -back days. Um, so I like to play lots of you know, different decks all the time. But my tomorrow, I have a lot of donation decks for tomorrow. And so we'll probably get back to Affinity Forge Friday. I know. It, it, it was a whole lot of fun to play. Definitely. Hey, Wayward. Better than a random, better than a random card in the, the deck. It may not really end up mattering too much, but we'll see. I could have dealt another two points of damage right now. Like so, right now, if if Arena didn't mess up with that, yeah, you know, my opponent should have taken an extra two damage, which means they'd be at five, and I'd have the two five like next turn five fives that would be able to kill my opponent. So yeah, like I this gi other ginger brute should be lethal for next turn, but it's not now. This should be a lethal attack. But because of that lag, my opponent goes down to one. So we'll see. Hopefully we can finish this out. You know, we got this Stone Coil Serpent with Trample over here. The bigger I make this thing, the better. No, crop. I'm talking about how I, it. I was trying to cast my ginger brute, and it. I'm not talking about the murderous rider getting. That, that that's not it. I was talking about the, when I tried to cast ginger brute earlier, it, it activated my steel overseer, so my ginger brute has one less counter than what it should have for the last couple of turns. So, it's had three attacks, but this ginger brute should have had one extra counter on it. Because I was trying to cast my card and it and it lagged and it clicked the steel overseer and activated before my card was cast. What? How are they making this attack? How do they they have to have something else? How do they expect to stay alive? They're gonna have to have instant speed removal. I know the questing beast can block. It's the serpent. The serpent has trample. How are how are they supposed to stay alive with this this serpent trample? I don't I don't know why they like how they attacked with that five five thinking they could stay alive. Uh, 
Okay, let's see. They were... Um, like, it was going to... It's gonna be tough for them. Like they were, they're gonna have to like block with everything. Anyway, but I mean, I yeah. But they just made it so the game ended. Is there a good is it control deck at the moment? Um, I don't have one myself, and I haven't played this specific deck, but this is what I would recommend for an is it control deck. There's a link right there. Gingerbrew didn't do any damage. Gingerbrew got lost in the jungle hollow. Couldn't find its way out of the jungle. Hey, Stokey. I do not play modern anymore. Nope. All arena all the time for myself. Um... kind of doing a little math there of like what you know like if we can play the serpent on two if we need to wait for it to be in a three three all that kind of stuff like what a two two serpent's gonna look like it's a good draw it's a good draw Keep drawing spells, not those lands. Unfortunate. when they don't have another removal for the serpent right now and we get to like I, I kind of want to use the gods willing to protect whatever I all that glitters basically um, so I don't I don't you know mind tapping out for it but I obviously I would prefer them not kill the serpent here Awesome, Caesar. Yeah, glad you like the the Gruel Henge deck.
So all that glitters adds five power to the battlefield. So they don't kill the, the owl. We should be able to kill them next turn, even with them gaining life with Ryder. They have to have multiple removal spells, of course, with our God's willing. I don't know if they're really playing uh, creatures with reach. They can gain two life with Ryder because Puppet, I'm just going to block and then exile. All right, so one mana draw card. If I cast it on Ginger Brute, they can, they can play Questing Beast to block Ginger Brute. Putting it on the owl means that they can't block this out. Like, you know, they're just not blocking this owl. What? Is that like a mistake? They just didn't. That had to have been a mistake, right? They had to have at least wanted to try. The writer. I mean, I, I had God's Willing for it. They only had one extra mana, so I, I'm, you know, like very, very, I'm like, you know, very sure that was going to be a win, but I think they, they chose the wrong mode. I guess, <clears throat> oh, they're looking for Knight for lethal. That's a, that's a good call. You're right. You're right. So, yeah, because cause I guess, because even if that would have resolved, that would have put them down to one because they lost two life. So the, the gingerbread. The Ginger Brute would have still been lethal anyway. So, yeah, I guess they probably were casting that. Looking for the Knight to drain. Hey, Kill Switcher. It's going real good. Going real good. We got some different decks today. But, of course, that's something I could say. Every day. But this time we're not doing green or black decks. Yeah, that's true. They could just gain... Yeah, that's a good point. If they kill my owl, they just get to gain two life by attacking. So maybe that, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe they were actually, maybe they were trying to kill it. I don't know. That was just weird. I don't know what was going on. I wish I had two white sources so I could play all that glitters and then have God's Willing back up. Kind of feel like I should just play all that glitters. No, we'll just pass. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not sure why Pell Collector was played after Barkhide Troll. I don't I don't know. Things happen. Well, it didn't matter. This thing was a 3-3 anyway.
How you doing? We do have too many islands in here. These islands haven't been very good. <clears throat> I'll probably be a little while since before I play Green Stompy again. We just we played it just a few days ago. Didn't do very well with it. Um, so it'll probably be a little little while again before I play it. I think I need to switch it up. I have survived Nico Ugh. and I will survive a... you. Could have had God's Willing available if I don't play the Owl. If this was mono green, I would probably take the other glitter. But the fact that we can't we can't cast multiple glitters in a turn, we don't have can't play like glitter plus God's Willing, them being green black of like I you know glitter they murderous rider kind of thing. Stomping time. Well, that's really good for me. I think they they should have killed Steel Overseer. It's very good for me that they did not kill Steel Overseer. I'll return with larger predators. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we get to just anthem our, our team every single turn. Got to kill the, the overseer. No way the mana would hold up, but Glimmer and Ember Cleave sound like a sweet alpha strike. Oh, so, like Glitter? I mean, this could be red-white instead of white-blue. We're talking about, like, red, you'd be able to play Frenzy instead of Forge. Frenzy's kind of a little better than Forge, at least at times. Forge allows you to still play cards in your hand, but... We'll just kill them next turn. Hmm. All right. You block here. You block here. You block here. Jeez. So, like, the Gargoyle looked awesome there. You know, playing defense with Steel Overseer. You know, we've been talking about earlier how the, the Gargoyle hasn't looked good at all, but that's where Gargoyle is awesome. Very good at defensive card. So Tribunal and Owl are the two that I'm looking at. Could play Apostle to stop Rotting Regisaur. Yeah, you always got to kill the Overseer. Like, the Overseer is too important. All right, not going to bring in the Owl. Ugh, just cutting Gideons. Four... 
tribunals. Um, yeah. we're up a game. We'll see. Like, Mystic Forge can do some busted things. And come on, there's 16 lands left in the deck. We're not going to draw more lands, right? Like, it's not even possible. I mean, it's possible, but it's just such a low percentage. 16 out of 53. Now out of 52. Now 15 out of 51. That was a good draw. Pop it into... Into a land on top to put to the bottom. There's another one, so now only 14 lands out of 50 cards. <laughs> I gotta stop taunting the game. I mean, so we have a we have a 28% chance of drawing a land. <laughs> uh, 28% chance achieved. All right, so now it's 13 out of 49. <laughs> it's 50-50. You mean 100% chance. All right, so now we're down to a 26% chance of drawing a land. 26 and a half. <laughs> You're going to spend your turn activating Knight to kill the Puppet. You're not getting any free damage in on me. Uh-uh. No free damage Friday over here. It's always 50 50, either you do or you don't. Yeah, no, like, it's. Yeah, exactly. You want to have a lot of lands in play for Forge, so. This isn't necessarily the worst for us because of Mystic Forge. Now my opponent having double knight and rotting regisaur, now that's a obviously a huge problem. Okay, I think I need to bring in Apostle. Come on. <laughs> oh, I am gonna love tearing this place to the ground. I'm not I'm not beating these things with trample. I mean Apostle doesn't beat those things with trample. Need glass gaskets, I guess. That's fine. 
Yeah, our deck's a lot better when there's Overseer, that's for sure. And when my opponent doesn't have absolutely huge one, th one and three drop creatures, that makes it more difficult also. We were going to, I mean, because that's the thing. We, If our opponent just had, you know, not absolutely huge trample creatures, we were going to be able to have some good, good turns. Are we not playing the Merfolk? What Merfolk? I can... Well, I don't think there's any artifact Merfolks. We are an artifact deck. The name Artifact Aggro. The Merfolk's not an artifact. I don't want it. Emery. Oh. That Merfolk. I was thinking of like Merfolk Secret Keeper or something. I was trying to think. That. Why is Glass Casket iffy? Glass Casket kills Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's awesome. How is that card iffy? We need to exile these things. It's two mana removal. No, CMC three or less. Not power three or less. So you get to take, like, it kills, it gets rid of Rotting Regisaur. And stuff like that. Yeah, it gets rid of, like, everything my opponent's playing. Yeah, em I could see Emery doing work in here. Emery's good. Yeah, like, honestly... Yeah, honestly, this deck feels like it should have Emery in it. I mean, instead of the Gideons. So I'm basically wasting their turn. Obviously, they get the attack with the Brontodon, but... I would like my opponent, like, I kind of like my opponent to tap out because I want a glass cast, get the Brontodon. Looks like they're not going to, though. If I try glass casketing Brontodon, they can just destroy Owl in response. Yeah, journey, journey nowhere. Yeah, that's a that's a good removal spell. Yeah, I should not have done that first, but all right, that's fine. 
They get to kill my 1 1 now. That's a lot better than them killing Owl. Like, this really isn't bad for me. Let's get rid of it again. It's not a bad trade. Wow, nothing to do. We're looking good. They had nothing to do there. We get to untap with God's willing. Go, Owl, go. The opponent's like, Ow. Well, he's attacking me. All right, I'll stop. <clears throat> yeah, we have a, a dance in the sideboard. Yeah, I could have tried to for lethal there. With giving this pro green and then attacking, but you never know. They could have they could have, you know, d still be sitting on a removal spell and you know, blown it up and come back, and I just didn't think it was worth it to do that. With us having the owl in the air. But yeah, I could have tried. Like, if they have, like, no cards in hand, you know, or they're tapped out, you know, it's definitely lethal. But they had a good amount of cards in hand and were not tapped out. Hmm. It's not lethal now because they have two two different colors of blockers with green and black. If I go pro green, Knight of the Ebon Legion blocks. If I go pro black, the others block. So that's that was the unfortunate part about them playing Knight of the Ebon Legion that last turn, and not another green creature. Where's our Karn? Not really doing anything. I am Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. Not helping out our aggressive deck too much. I've survived an apocalypse. I will survive you. Well, they still can't target. All right, so we're three and one. If I'm hexproof while chance for glory or Lich's master resolves, do I lose the game? Yes. Do Planeswalkers plus abilities go up on the stack? Yep. So like our Vivian, use, the Vivian use a plus ability, and so it's just immediately at five. And so you can't really respond to it while it's at four, and then try to respond with like a four damage spell. Stopping time. Is this thing have trample? No. Those have trample. No trample. Three and one. Artifact aggro still in there. Steel Overseer. Doing some work, but that time the Owl got in there. Yeah, I, I could definitely see playing Emery's instead of the Gideons, though. The Gideons haven't looked fantastic. Fantastic. 
But these these artifact cards are, are pretty good, though. I'll say that the Serpent, Stone Coil Serpent, you know, just playing with that card during the Affinity deck that we played yesterday, the Demir Affinity deck, um, it was... Um, It was really impressive, and it's been really good here as well. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like it enough to just put it in, you know, like any kind of deck. But in these artifact matters uh, decks, it fills a really nice hole into the deck. A hole in the deck. All right. Let's... Um. Keep two lands or keep no puppet? Let's keep two lands. Yeah, Kasor, that, that specific time that you're talking about with that video... Um, the Nissa than the Scry land. I know what you're talking about. Ugh. Wish I would have kept that land. I was I was looking at chat and stuff, and I, I didn't realize I was clicking through that at the time. It wasn't something that I was trying to do. So yeah, I make I make mistakes with you know multitasking with streaming and everything while playing. But if that was if that was me just playing, I wouldn't ma wouldn't have made that mistake. Hmm. Build your own 2-4. Yeah, I'm glad our Golgari opponent is playing Golgari. At every opportunity, your light will cleave the darkness. All right, so we'll give our puppet vigilance so we can attack and still stay on defense for the Gideon. You know. Obviously, I do not want them to have a murderous rider to kill either of my creatures. I want uh, to be able to untap with these two and then have God's Willing available. But there's only four murderous riders in, their de in the deck. With how weak my hand is, the best chance of winning is getting both of these in play immediately. Obviously, they have one of the four murderous riders. Can never have nice things. If that was Emery, we would have been able to play Emery and have mana for God's Willing. Okay, well, let's try it again. This is a Do we get nice things justice. this time? I will lend you my or still never nice things? Hey, numbers. What about Woodland Champion? No, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to play that card in the Abzan Hero deck. You don't. I mean, you want to play cards that trigger Hero. I'm already playing a lot of cards that don't trigger Hero in that deck. Um, if you're playing Woodland Champion, you just then you probably just want to play like that and Questing Beast and other stuff and just take out Hero, and you know just have it in Abzan Midrange deck without Hero. Which, of course, you can go that route if you'd like, but. Um, 
you know, but I, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to play hero and will then champion together. Bravery well, that's rough. Enough. They had two murderous riders. Tulsmer and Garrick. Yeah, so that's not very many cards to make tokens, though. That's what, like four total cards in the deck? Four out of 60? Like, I, don't, I don't think there's very many things to make tokens in that deck. You need a lot of tokens for Woodland Champion to be worth it. Just like you need a lot of multicolor spells. So if I attack with the puppet, we do four, but then my opponent gains two off of Swordmaster. So go down to four, up to six, down to two. Could have the other Murderous Rider then. If I just leave this back. No, I haven't, Storm. You now, some people have talked about that on the YouTube videos with the with the Ayara Citadel they tried replacing. How do they have so much removal? Tried replacing some cards with Bloodthirsty or Alist, but I haven't seen, I haven't played against it though. I'm really hoping they're out of removal now. <laughs> Played removal the last three turns. Really hoping they're out by now. Hey, farmer. JD. Why do you, why do you got to do that to me? You should leave before I make Katie said Vraska 4 incoming. Just only removal and lifelink creatures. This isn't isn't ideal. This hurts trading the ginger brood away like this. But obviously I don't want to activate the ginger brood because I want to play the owl. Well, that's really good. Oh, it's not often I'm outmaneuvered. 
That worked out well. Hmm. These are all pretty decent. Are they out of removal now? Just four straight turns where they've played removal? Uh, no. The answer to that question is no. Went four straight turns with the removals, removal and now a sweeper. No, that's great. Yeah, gargoyle. Is hit or miss. There's there's times where it's really where it's a really weak card, but there's other times like when you have overseer out, uh, being able to pump it up, where it's really nice. But yeah, it's a on its own, it's not very good. Wouldn't mind finding another one of those glass caskets to get rid of this murderous rider. Oh no. Uh, that's gonna be a difficult card to deal with next next turn. We already have some difficult cards to deal with over here. I don't need that thing also. Okay. Good turn. One thing is we do have two glass caskets down at the bottom of the library now. They got to run out of removal eventually, right? They got to eventually. I don't believe I have a way to reshuffle the library. Yay. Which is a little annoying because we know we have uh, like two serpents, two serpents and two glass caskets down here. Four of my best cards. I'm gonna keep the island. Again, having having more mana is good. Um, so I'll just draw the island and then try to play stuff off the top after that. Stop. I'm good at what I do. No, you're not. And what I do is win. Uh, okay, never mind. You're good at that. It's seriously been every single turn we've had a creature, they've had removal spells since turn three. Every single turn of the game. <laughs> they went Rider, Rider, Trophy, Vraska, Sweeper. Ryder, Vraska. The only turn they didn't was a turn I didn't play a creature because I just played Mystic Forge. Since turn three, it's just been removal every turn. <laughs> yeah, Golgari two for ones. That is a pretty good, pretty good deck. Golgari two for ones. We need Mystic Forge to be like a. 
17 for one for me to catch up. Yay, Mystic Forge is great. Go, Puppet, go. Yeah, just keep that. Why not? It's something we can play. Today's our lucky day. <clears throat> we had some good hits there. No, there's no Emery's in this deck. I could definitely see playing Emery's. For sure. So you can run games like Overwatch on decent settings just fine, but Arena starts to bog down after two or three best after two or three best of three matches. I was I was wondering how Arena compared to other games. Because it does, you know, bog down like this and everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my opponent's name is Golgari. That's... They were letting me know what they were playing. Are there, like, high-end PCs that run Arena, like, super well? Is that, is that like, even a thing? Can people actually play Arena and, you know, play it in, like, 1440 and it not just really mess up? I used to play it in 1440, but with with uh, recording as well as streaming, it can't really handle it. I can play it 1440 off stream just fine. I guess this thing having death touch is going to be harder to deal with. You have a high end, only a year old, only problems with the memory leak issue. Bottleneck is the client itself. I only pick targets that interest me. Lucky you. That obviously really hurts. I won't forgive this. It's hoping we could, you know, go one turn without my opponent having removal. One turn. That's all I wanted was one turn. We could draw this God's Willing. One turn. But no, can't cannot have one turn. No attacks. Yay. Can I get any life? Ginger Brute. 
gain life with ginger root. Well, Beanstalk Giant is turning this up to 11 now. Imagine this huge beanstalk giant, you know, like on a battlefield, and then like this, you know, very, you know, small 1-1 one, one human is there, and the beanstalk giant's like, oh, stub my toe, can't, can't go any further this attack, I'll have to try again, that human was in the way. Well, my overseer was... Summoning sick, so I could not activate it. It is now not summoning sick, so now I can activate it. <laughs> yeah, imagine Pinocchio stopping the giant, becoming becoming a real boy, and then walking away unscathed. I know, right? All right, Mystic Forge outgrinding removal dot deck. We want the dance to be able to bring back a bunch of steel overseers. Want these other things. We'll take out the Gideons. I should probably just take out these all that glitters with them just playing all the removals. The ginger brutes being able to take down the Vraskas was really important. Yeah, they have a decent amount of things to Disdainful Stroke. Eh. Don't want to... You know, I want, still want to keep a lot of artifacts and everything in the deck. I want to make our... I want to let our deck do its thing. Do I think this deck has legs against Field at all? I'm not sure. We haven't played against Field. Um, it's it's kind of like the, the I think how it would probably go is like the games that you win, you'll steamroll them with the all that glitters enchantment. That that would be my guess is that that would be like the most important card. Um, this deck comparing, yeah, so with power level with the Demir Affinity deck we played yesterday, this deck has a, ugh, boo. It has a, a really high top end of the games, like, like the games that you have that all that glitters enchantment and they can't kill your creature or you have 
a god's willing to protect it. Like you're you're beating basically everything in the format. But there's also just a you know it's a it's a huge gap between the best and the worst because like the, the worst with the, this deck, you're you know you're just playing like some cards that don't, that don't do hardly anything with the other one drops there. Um, where Demir is going to be more consistently powerful throughout a a longer series of games, and Demir just has doesn't have the upside, but still has probably more power potential there over longer games. I the Demir deck is more my speed. I like the I like the Demir deck more. So obviously Clover into Murderous Rider is pretty devastating for us here. My opponent just not having removal at some point would be really nice. Oh. Speaking of devastating. Just a, a four for zero. That's not even a four for one because they still have their, their seven mana creature they can cast. Just a four for zero. I had some very important cards, obviously. I had a, a really good hand. Uh, yeah, Mystic Forge. Yeah, Mystic Forge is definitely better than Emery, but I uh, I think again these these decks that we're playing today are not decks that I put together. But um, I think the I feel like Emery could be better than the Gideons. I haven't been very impressed with Gideon. I wouldn't mind seeing Emery in that that slot. So I'm looking to draw one more land here. Dance for two. Bring these things back. I should probably be attacking with Serpent there. Eh. Wait a turn. Why? Why do you have to be like this opponent? We're just trying to have an enjoyable match of Magic the Gathering. And you have to be like this. I think a flying? No. Whenever it attacks, if they have two or fewer cards, then it gains flying. How many dance in the deck? Just that one. It was in the sideboard. We brought it in here. Yeah, all that glitters is a really powerful card. We boarded it out here because of how much removal my opponent has. But yeah, it's very powerful. Yeah, these Lucky Clovers have been incredible for our opponent. Letting all these things double up. This is just... Kind of been a perfect hand for my opponent. 
like the one innkeeper to, to draw the extra cards here. Slim down to two. They gain two life, go to four. This is just over. All my stuff's dead. I mean, like, what can I, what can I draw? I guess I draw a stone coil serpent. Doesn't let my opponent attack. If I had one more mana, I'd be able to hit. Oh no, they're at four, right? They're not two, never mind. Ed two, Ginger Brute, Tay. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to be playing this Apostle. It's just a 2-1, though. I hate that it gets blocked by, you know, every single possible green creature. Blocked very easily. Right, we're gonna need to draw a couple of lands for the Mystic Forges. I don't really need to play like shock in to get this uh, this zero power creature in play. We're not attacking with it anyway. I can just take another draw step, have more information about my scry and everything and just and not have to shock. Nothing wrong with Ginger Brute, but we're looking for more powerful stuff. You know, hoping to get this land to be able to play the Forge. Yay. Hey, the arm. GG's. Another really good looking hand for my opponent here with turn one dress, turn two lucky charm. Could have murderous rider again. Like that would be my assumptions that they're 
I mean, they it's possible they have. Okay, they have that thing. So they could add trophy also. Divination those. This is going to be tough to win. We need Mystic Forge to be just absolutely incredible to win. These cards are just, they just get so much. They just get to do so much stuff with Lucky Clover over here. I mean, just double rampant growth, and you're not even spending a card because that's still a seven mana creature. So it's just free double rampant growth. It's even better than double rampant growth. They come into play untapped. <laughs> and we're sitting here playing O3s and O2s. <laughs> and my opponents are playing all these cards that get so much value. <clears throat> it's a little silly. Just a little silly. Oh yeah, another day with a thousand viewers in here. Welcome everybody. <laughs> yeah, good old zero attack aggro. Feel pretty sheepish. We could really use a land. So we can dance for four. Bring back the Mystic Forges and these two creatures. Ooh, yeah, that'd be really nice. The decks, the deck screen, having being able, you'd be able to sort them and have folders and stuff like that. That'd be really nice. I wish they had more slots available than what they have still. How good is the Golgari Adventure deck? Um, I mean, it's it's definitely good. I mean, it's definitely one of the the top decks. I like this. I haven't seen this version. I've never played against this version before. What my opponent's playing. I like it. It's a it's a much bigger not much, but it's it's a bigger version with you know, I haven't really seen it with Beanstalk Giants and you know, three main deck Vraska, Fine Finality, stuff like that. I, I like I like that version. Uh, I've usually usually see it with like Love Struck Beast and being lower to the ground. It's like <laughs> yeah. No more ravenous chupacabra. Well, we've... We got that land for Dance with the Mance. Looks like my opponent should have taken Dance. Looks like they should have taken Dance. With their Duress, they took a Mystic Forge, but we just got a Mystic Forge back. Do not defy the and now here we go. Here we go. Um, I, I may want that God's Willing later. Let's tuck it under here. Here we go. Hmm. We think a tribunal doesn't really seem like we need it. Ooh, I want that. 
Here we go. <laughs> Stop. Ugh. I can't ever have Steel Overseer. Why does my, why does my opponent hate Steel Overseer so much? Pretty nice being able to play Arcanist Owl off the top. Three. Oh right, it costs less. I could have done. I could have done more than that. Could have done five. Right with the Ugin making it cost less. Attack. So all they got is this giant. We have a giant board. So my opponent made one big mistake. The duress. Am I dead? Is that what they were saying, game? Good game? The Jurassic, they needed to take Dance. They took one of my two Mystic Forge, but I hit six land drops and got to replay Dance. All right, looks like not dead. Yeah, Mystic Forge out, Mystic Forge out grinded the two for one dot deck. Because you just get to play all your cards for free, even if they're not very good. And they're just O3s. They're all free. Yeah, let's just play this thing. Oh, I've tapped something that's white. Here, you. All right, time to attack. Attack. Man, Ugin with Mystic Forge and having a bunch of things that are free is pretty nice. This has been a long, a long match. It's a long format. It's already 5.30, we're still on the same deck. And we were playing the aggro deck. We're two and a half hours into the stream. Okay, speaking of that, I, I really should reset Arena. It's just, it's gotten, it's gotten pretty jumpy. Final boss. I thought we were going to lose with this deck like a long time ago. It seems like it kind of felt like 
the last few matches, like every match, it like it's like, oh well, our our run's gonna be over, and it's like, oh no, we I guess we won. Next one, well, match is gonna be over, the run's over, but nope, we won. We're still going. We just kind of keep on going. Is this the most most fun deck you've seen? Oh, check out if you have not, check out the from YouTube. Check out the Demir Affinity deck we played yesterday. It's kind of like this, except for it just goes a lot bigger. It goes bigger, you know. It's it's with more focused on Ugin and Tezzeret. That deck was awesome. Check that one out over on YouTube from yesterday. Demir Affinity. Uh, we have not played against Golos Field yet, so I'm not I'm not sure. I don't know. Island, island. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was gruel day. <laughs> Thanks, lords. Yeah, that's just the normal. Yeah, it's Nickel Bolas art for the background. Yay, white mana. Alright, well, we were wondering how this deck does against Field of the Dead, right? Um... They'd have to have untapped blue to have to ferry this next turn. So let's hope we can you know be able to untap and then be able to hold up God's willing for it. The beer Olympian. Thank you so much, Olympian. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Y'all are awesome. Thank you very much. Once upon a time. Why don't you remove two islands and put in two planes in its place? Um, yeah, I mean, that would be certainly be reasonable. The islands have looked pretty bad. But I guess it's to help, you know, it's to help cast the the sideboard cards. Um, yeah, there are 16 white sources in the deck. Yep. Yeah, these these were all 5-0 lists that like that we're trying out here today. I didn't I didn't build any of these decks. But I wanted to try them out as is. No, there's other blue cards in the side. Like, there's side. There's not any blue cards in the main deck. There's zero blue in the main deck. Uh, be, you know, there's this thing, I guess. But sideboard, there's stuff. Um, Yeah, links are allowed. Bill, you're good. So they're changing. Just moving. The next BNR from November 18th to October 21st. Oh, at first. At first, I was thinking that was just, you know, like the same month from the 18th to, to the 21st, but that is an entire month there. That's... The only reason to, to update that would be if, if you do plan on changing formats. Any final boss music? It is the final boss. 
Why didn't I start the final boss place? All right, here we go. Final boss. Why not wait till they target first? Well, because it's Teferi. Waiting against Teferi is a bad idea. That's more like it. Of course, I had to do pro blue, because if I choose pro white, the glitters will fall off. Down to four. I've got time. I thought that was coming with them uh, putting out the small with them putting out the small crisis. I thought that was coming, but I really just couldn't do anything about it. So, Unfor you know, unfortunately, I couldn't do anything about it. Did put two glass caskets down here. Glass caskets could have got rid of the crisis. I'll protect you. Hey, Zedalam. Hey, Blade. All right, there you go. You don't have to just delete your pre-made decks, though. The the pre-made decks. You can you can try making your own first, also. Without deleting. We came very close to killing the Golos deck. We came very close. But not quite. Trust me, I have a plan. Not quite. The lock, lock twain gargoyles aren't really doing very much for us. Uh, that's not really helping.
and play 8 8 crisis the next turn game's over so i i kind of need disdainful strokes against them but of course they have to ferry so it's a little rough it's definitely this this is definitely a disdainful stroke matchup Okay, here we go. Mm, so close. Cards are good, but we just don't have lands. All right, let's draw land. Come on, deck. Draw land. All right, we're all in. We are all in. We're all out. Sorry, I'm late. Why do they have to have that thing on turn two? I've got it. Can't even have like play one turn for my enchantment and have God's willing the next turn two. We will meet again. No lands over there. Darn. Darn. Yeah. Uh, because Disdainful Stroke is still just that good. It, it's, it's certainly worth it to play, even though they have Teferi, because... I can also kill Teferi, like we did there. Like this is this is like the whole reason why Disdainful Stroke is in the sideboard. It's for this matchup. Unfortunately, they didn't play a land the last turn, so we know that they have just tons of spells in hand. And so even countering one... Which is very good. They have the ability to have, or like, you know, they're going to have a lot more of those also.
Well, I'm really glad they played their land first. Oh, they had to play their land to activate Golos anyway, but yeah. That's just a whiff. Ugh. I guess I should have put this down to the bottom. Which I still can. I can look for... I can cut I can go all in this turn. We need one mana artifact. Yay! The plan worked. We went all in. Rewarded. Before they play Time Wipe. Kill all my... Kill all my creatures. Rewarded. I think Deputy is good in this deck. I could see that. Deputy would be pretty nice. To have access to. Yeah, Mystic Forge is pretty slow, but I just don't see anything else in my sideboard I really want to play. Could play like an extra, another glass casket. For Krasis. I mean, this hand can do a lot of damage. Yeah, this hand's not very good. I don't know if a five card hand would be very good. Gideon. Gideon can be pretty powerful. You know, we're going to have to play a little bit of a slower game here with Gideon and Mystic Forge. Okay. Unfortunately, their hand's looking pretty good. Hi, Gustavo. Yeah, it's a good turn. Turn three, have six lands in play. A good hand, I meant to say. It's a good hand. Turn three, six lands. This is a prime day for justice. Prepare for battle. Well, my turn three, I'll play a Gideon.
light will cleave the darkness. Hey, Samantha. <clears throat> We've been in better spots before. Been in much better spots before. That was a weird order there. Come on. We need lands. That other Mystic Forge was a really bad draw. It just does, does nothing for us. It's four zombies. All right, looks like they got us. Yeah, Flicker. I'm I'm a little busy here, you know, playing and streaming and stuff, but may have somebody in chat. People in chat will help out. All right, I'm just getting all these zombies. We're going to move on to the next deck that is... That's not a game that we're winning. We're closing in on three hours on this thing. All right, so our deck was our deck was pretty cool. You know, Steel Overseer was awesome. All that glitters won us a lot of games. The deck's still rough around the edges. Our mana was pretty poor. Uh, the Gideons were, were just basically... The like Gideon was just never good. But against Sweepers, that was rough. I I don't like our sideboard. Especially against against that Golos deck. I just don't like the sideboard. Like We have Disdainful Stroke and that's it. And as we saw there, like, I don't know how we're... like How are we supposed to beat Time Wipes? Realistic. Like, we just have to have... Disdainful stroke for time wipe. I don't know. It our deck would really fall apart with it, like those time wipes. It was it was pretty rough. Um, God's willings were like okay, but again, like they're just t trying to time wipe. Yeah, I think em yeah, I think Emery could could maybe be better than Gideon, but again, as as y'all know, I just I just don't feel like you should be playing a blue deck and not have at least three Ashioks in a sideboard as just, you know, like something like another way to attack the Golos deck or, or something. I don't know. 
That's that's of course the card that I've always just been using in that matchup. Um, but besides that, uh, besides that matchup, because you know like that's I don't really know what to say there. I, this this looked pretty looked kind of tough to win that. Um, it's possible that Field of the Dead will be banned. Yes, I I don't think it's likely, but it's it's possible. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if it happened. I guess I could say that, but I I don't think it's a likely scenario. Um, besides that, uh, our deck did a lot of good things and a lot of good matchups. Um, you know, against the green black decks, the God's Willings were were really nice, um, and then Mystic Forge. Mystic Forge was just incredible. You know, this uh, <clears throat> sometimes our pup our puppets and gargoyles did something, but most of the time the puppets and gargoyles didn't do anything. So it's like we're playing like cards that don't do anything. The ginger brutes though were really impressive. You know, being being unblockable quite a bit. We got to kill a lot of planeswalkers with these ginger brutes, put in all that glitters on them, finish off opponents. This this card was really, really strong. I'd say like this was the most impressive card. Like whenever we played through this league, I kind of knew what the cards were going to be doing, but this this card was really impressive um, overall. So like serpent, ginger brute, steel overseer, those three are awesome. Uh, these two were were very borderline. Um, really, only only did anything if we had steel overseer, basically. There. <clears throat> All right, uh, but that's that's it here for artifact aggro. We got three other decks to get to tonight. Hopefully, maybe we'll only get to two. We'll see with how the time allows, but we need to get going. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, uh, first, of course, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. But then also let me know what you think about the deck. Uh, if you're trying the deck out also, uh, let me know how it's going for you. If um, if you're doing anything different, like with the sideboard, if you're um, or uh, even in the main deck, you know, if you're if you're changing the deck up, uh, you know, what are you doing? How's it working for you? All that kind of stuff. Leave some comments over on YouTube. But uh, thank you so much for watching some Artifact Aggro, and I'll see you for the next video.